A big problem with gradient descent in machine learning is that it is slow. At each iteration, you need to compute the gradient of a loss function that has as many terms as samples in your training dataset. Think millions or even billions of terms. Bill Gates once said, I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. Well, stochastic gradient descent is a lazy person approach to address gradient descent problems. Stochastic gradient descent works exactly the same as gradient descent, except that instead of computing the gradient of the whole loss function, you just pick a constant number of terms and take the gradient of that. Stochastic gradient descent picks these terms exactly as a lazy person would, in a completely random fashion. In summary, at each iteration, stochastic gradient descent picks a random batch of data points, uses that batch to compute a noisy gradient approximation, and uses that approximation to perform a descent step. With this approach, not only the time per iteration is basically a constant, the memory needed to compute the gradient is also a constant. So while each iteration of the stochastic version of gradient descent is less accurate than that of the vanilla version, the fact that each iteration is cheap allows us to do more of them. What is surprising is that in practice, stochastic gradient descent not only catches up with the vanilla gradient descent, but it often finds better solutions. And this should come off as a complete surprise if anything using an inaccurate method should lead to suboptimal solutions. In the last few years, there has been an explosion of publications that try to give partial answers to this phenomenon. Let's go through some of them. One common explanation is that in saddle points where vanilla gradient descent would get stuck, the extra noise in stochastic gradient descent increases your chances of escaping. Another explanation has to do with the geometry of local minima. When a local minimum is narrow, changing the entries of our solution ever so slightly deteriorates performance a lot. This indicates that a wide local minimum will generalize better to unseen data. The noise in stochastic gradient descent will help you again escape narrow minima more easily. But my favorite explanation is this one. If you look at one iteration of stochastic gradient descent, and you perform this change of variables, then you can rewrite the iteration of stochastic gradient descent as follows. Taking expectations with respect to the noise leads to this. Or in other terms, stochastic gradient descent is just gradient descent in disguise applied to a smooth version of f. To conclude this video, let me just point out that stochastic gradient descent is by no means a miracle solution. It still suffers from some of the same problems of gradient descent, it is just that empirically people have realized that it tends to give better results for a wide variety of machine learning applications. And the moral of the story is that fast and sloppy is often better than slow and perfect. I know, you come for math content, but you leave with life lessons. This was Stochastic Gradient Descent in 3 minutes. If you liked the video, like and subscribe, and see you next time.